I'd like to minister today on a word and on a subject matter today, I think is uh, what the Lord is preparing this church for. Uh, the next um, level, uh, next uh, plateau that we're uh, aiming for, and um, it's going to be an essential word. The word is surrender. This week, I heard some fantastic preaching uh, in Annapolis in our WME conference, and um, Brother Alan Platt done a tremendous job as our featured speaker from the nation of South Africa, and, uh, and he touched on some of these scriptures that I'm going to share with you in one of the morning sessions. You remember back on Father's Day when Brother James Smith was here and, and preached, and during his sermon, he prophesied and proclaimed that God was going to give us a hundred fathers, a hundred men. That become clear to me exactly what the Lord was wanting our church to focus on. And, um, and the key word is surrender. Key word is surrender. And what I'm talking about surrendering is all of us need to get on board and surrender our life and our will to the teaching of Jesus Christ. Don't see how much sin you can get involved with and get by with. The word is surrender today. I want every individual, including myself, to get a hold of this word and this message today that God is speaking to our hearts to surrender to Him. S surrender more fully, more completely to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Let's turn in our Bibles to 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, I want to read to begin with, and I ask you to stand with me while we read the Word of God together. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He is the perpetuation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. Let us pray. Our Father today, we thank You for the Wonderful congregation here at Souls Harbor. We thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for the Word, the message today on surrender. We pray for the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit to help me proclaim the Word and help us likewise to receive the Word of God and become doers of the Word of God and not just hearers only. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. You may be seated today. The Word is surrender. And we need scriptures like this that I'm going to read to you through verse 17 today. And it's going to reveal to us how that each of us need to surrender more fully to the life of Christ and His teachings and truly become disciples. We need to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in this passage of scripture... We're going to talk about three categories of believers. Yes, they are various categories or divisions of believers. Jesus made reference. There's 30, 60, and 100-fold believers that produces that kind of fruit. All right? So there are three categories that John began to write about, and we need to get a hold of the message. He wrote about little children. He wrote about young men. And he wrote about fathers. When James was here, we gave him a plaque. And on the inscription of the plaque said, they, Though they be 10,000 instructors or teachers, they be few fathers. Now, there are very few fathers 
in our churches across America. And so what we're going to look at today is how we that our children, that refers to young converts, in a baby stage as a believer. My job as pastor and all the team is to we get this children to move and advance to young men. Become a little more mature Christians. Then our ultimate goal is to get the young men to move on up to fatherhood. Fatherhood and spiritual fathers is the mature level of believers in God's church. A father is able to produce children, able to train children and educate children in the ways of God. And so James prophesied that God was going to give us a hundred fathers, spiritual fathers, And those hundred fathers are going to, in turn, grow up from the young men another hundred fathers. Now, from the hundred fathers, you have a resource pool to get elders, deacons, trustees or board members, whatever you want to refer to it as to lead and guide our church also for teachers, for leaders in various departments. So our goal is is to encourage spiritual growth and development in our church. From That's going to be our priority within the walls of this building. Now it's our job to set goal and vision for the entire church and ministry. And so within the walls of the building, that's where we're going to focus at for a while, is seeing the development from children's stage to young men's stage and on to spiritual adult fathers to be able to lead and guide God's church in the ministry God has called us to do. It's evident that God has taken this congregation to great heights, but we've only scratched the surface of where God wants to take us. So it's my job to define a clear route and a clear path for this church to follow. God has got plans for beyond the walls of this church, for this church to be a shining light in the city of London, Laurel County, and our region and also to the world. Our missions conference is coming up next month, 6th, 7th, and 8th. We're going to be raising money for projects around the world to help influence the world to turn to Jesus Christ. So yes, we as a congregation, my job today is to surrender more fully to the calling that God has placed on my life. And in turn, I want to teach every one of you to surrender more fully to the teachings of Jesus Christ. We are witnessing, no doubt, end-time events and signaling to all of us the soon return of Jesus Christ. And I want us... So many people have been in the church for 20 years and they're still in the category of children. Some has been in the church for 20 years and they still qualify to be in the area of young men. But few of us are attaining the level of fatherhood. That is our goal. We have several fathers in our church, but I want all of us to attain that level of fatherhood. Fatherhood. I want you as fathers to begin to mentor a young man. 
or a new convert as a child and begin to help them develop and become the person that God has planned for their life. It's going to require a little time. It may require a little money like, I'll buy you a hamburger. Meet me for lunch. I want to talk to you. I want to help you. I want to encourage you. Now, this same category applies for women as well. Young children, young men and fathers. So, yes, women can become a father, spiritually speaking, in the church as well. And we have several of those. So, this is a category of believers. You know, the Bible uses terms like, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You know it's talking about women too, don't you? She that believeth, but the Bible says he that believeth. And here it talks about children, young men, and fathers. Well, likewise, it's talking about women as well. And so the Word of God is not written just to men, but it's written to women as well. So I want all of us to get this idea today that God is birthing in my spirit, and I want to be Reveal to every one of us the importance of surrendering our life, our will, our ambitions, our passions, our goal to the teaching of Jesus Christ. All right, let's go back to verse 1 and begin to read some. So here it begins to talk about in verse 1, the first category of believers is children. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. Now, you should not have to talk to a father and say, Father, don't you sin. But you have to talk to children, young converts, in a baby stage that you have to tell them, don't live a life of sin. Are you following me? Look at verse 1 again. My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. But he did tell them, if any person sins, we have an advocate or a lawyer with the Father, which is Jesus Christ, the righteous. He pleads our case, grants forgiveness when we sin. He is perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We are under a mandate of Christ to take this gospel into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. It's pretty evident. If you're not keeping God's commandments, you don't really know Him. He that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought him also also to walk even as Jesus walked. So our goal is to train young converts, children, in children's stage to become true to God and on their path to growing to become young men in the faith, and on for their ultimate destiny as to be fathers in the church. Brethren, I write no new commandment. Thank God for that. He don't, it's nothing new strange that God de- does. He says, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which things is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and true light now shineth. If you're yielding your life and surrendering your life to Christ, the true light of Christ is now shining. He that saith he is the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. We don't have to self-explain that. That's God's plain word. If you've got hatred in your heart for a brother, you need to get rid of it because it will give you gate trouble in heaven. He that loveth his brother and abideth in the light, there is none occasion of stumbling in him. 
But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. A lot of people have blinded eyes in the church. I write unto you now, little children. Can we say little children? Because your sins are forgiven, you for His name's sake. Little children, young converts, God has forgiven you of your sins. That's your starting point. I write unto you fathers, because ye have known Him that is from the beginning. And I write unto you young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. Young men are valuable in the church. Children are valuable in the church, but they don't need to stay children. They don't need to stay young men. They need to grow into a fatherhood so they can lead and guide God's church. Because you have known the Father. I write unto you fathers, because you have known Him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men, because you are strong. And the Word of God abideth in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. So the Bible here in these few scriptures, it says to children twice, your sins are forgiven and you have known the Father. Young man, he talks about and declares, you have overcome the wicked one. You're on your way to grow in maturity. You are strong and the word of, you are strong and the word of God abideth in you. And then fathers, it simply says, you have known him from the beginning. They are steady, rock solid, pillars in the church. They simply have known God the Father. All right, I want you to ask yourself today, where are you in this progressing of our faith. Are you still a little child? Are you still a young man? Or you have reached fatherhood? We need fathers, and James preached and prophesied that God was going to give us a hundred valuable fathers that's capable of reproducing children in the faith, bringing people to Jesus Christ, being a, a, a a pillar in the church. And you know what those hundreds are going to do? They're going to turn into another hundred. A hundred fathers can build a thousand member church. Two hundred fathers can build a two thousand member church. So you see how valuable this is? Is getting children to young men's stage and young men on the father's stage. We can really impact the city of London where Jesus truly can be Lord of the city, and we can let our light shine throughout Laurel County and throughout our region around us and all around the world. God is a big God. God wants to take us somewhere. He's already, we're on the journey, but we've only scratched the surface, as I repeat, of where God is wanting to take us to. Our job as a church, grow fathers in the church. We're going to have a baptizing tonight. That means there's going to be more children added to the church. Even though they're adults, they're still children in the faith. They need to grow to young men's status. That's what we want to help them do. And then grow on to fatherhood status. So you that are fathers already, I want you to begin to mentor the young men. And you young men in the church, I want you to begin to mentoring the children. I'm talking about spiritually speaking. So we've all got an assignment. As a father of the church, I want to uh, mentor all these young men and children too. That's my job. But I want each one of you to get on board and become a mentor and to begin to father a young man. And young men, I want you to father the chil- uh, to mentor the children that are coming up in the church, spiritually speaking. If you're a young convert, you're a child. 
And if you've been in a little while, you should be a young man. The Word of God abiding in you and overcoming the devil. Amen? Then you go on to fatherhood status. Let me read to you a few more scriptures that will clearly clarify this very good for you. Verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And that's not talking about going to Cumberland Falls or going to a ball game and supporting your kids. That's talking about the sin and the corruption of this world. The sin and the corruption of this world. Now, playing a ball game is not a sin. Going on vacation to Myrtle Beach is not a sin. So the world, we love God's creation. Love to see God's beauty everywhere. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about not the natural world, but the spiritual world that's of wrongdoing, fighting, feuding, devouring one another, taking advantage of one another, the sin of this world. Fathers know that, and we need to teach that to the young men, and young men teach that to the children. For all that is in the world, all that's out there in the sinful world, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Look at these categories. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. It's not of the Father God, but is of the world. A spiritual father in the church is not of you either. And you're to teach it to the young men and the children in the church. Listen to verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the just thereof, and the just thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I want you to surrender your life to the teachings of the Bible so that you can abide and do the will of God. And so doing, you will live and abide forever. Amen? So you've got your assignment within the walls of this building as all the children are to grow to become young men. And young men are become fathers. That includes the women as well. God wants us to mature and be leaders in God's church. In so doing, we'll be able to influence our city, influence our county. We want to be a positive light to our city. Oh, yes, the city knows where Souls Harbor's at. Amen? They know where we're at, and we're making an impact. Laurel County knows where Souls Harbor's at. And parts of the world as well knows where Souls Harbor as well. We're looking forward to Samson being here. I got to meet him Friday night up in Hamilton, a wonderful man. And he's going to be here tonight sharing with us the love of God singing about this good Jesus. And boy, I'll tell you, God's got a work that's going on all around the world. There's a lot of things I'd just like to tell you, but this can't go into detail because other people can get this message and, and get these words and, and could cause harm to believers around the world. And so we want to pray for the persecuted church and pray one for another. And pray for our spiritual growth and development in this walls of this building so that we can be the light that God would have us to be to the city of London, Laurel County, our region, and the world beyond. Samson will be here tonight, as I mentioned. And we've got, Souls Harbor's got money invested in their churches, their ministries. And he's going to come and give us a report to how things are going. That excites me to no end. And if it don't excite you, 
that should be telltale signs that you may be still in the children's stage or you may be in the young man's stage and you need to grow on up to fatherhood because that's why we exist as a church, to fulfill the great commission. It's not a great suggestion, but it's a great commandment to fulfill the great commission. Wow. That's why we exist as a New Testament church. Some churches exist for I don't know why they exist. There was one preacher was telling about a story, and I think there's some merit to that. We need to let it um, sink into our hearts. This person came to the minister and said, I want you to pray for me that God would heal my body. And abruptly the, the minister said back and to that person and said, why would the Lord want to heal you? That's talking about what are we doing for God? Are we growing in the Lord? Are we being a blessing to the body of Christ? Are we just taking up space? Wake up, church. God wants us to be on the grow, on the increase, on the maturity level. Of course, God wants to heal everybody that will come to Him. But we need to ask ourselves, what am I doing for God? Why, why does God need to keep me around anyway? What am I doing to upbuild the body of Christ? What am I doing to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? How am I growing in the faith? Our assignment is children to grow and to become young men. Young men are to grow and become fathers in the church. And fathers are to be producing children, spiritual children in the church, bringing in the lost, introducing them to Jesus Christ. I know this is heavy stuff, great responsibility, but I know you'd rather me tell you as wait to you get to judgment and Jesus tell you. Too late then to prepare yourself. I know you'd rather me tell you than to wait to get to judgment and let the Lord tell you. The Lord is speaking to you through me today, through the Word of God. Wow. Boy, I tell you, you can build a church on this, on this Word today. You can take territory from the enemy. You can take back what the devil has stole from you. And I want to tell you today, our prayer is God help me to surrender to you. Surrender. That's the key word. Surrender to the teaching of the Bible. Many of you know what the Bible says, but you're not doing it. I'm calling on all of us, myself, all of us, I need to surrender more and more fully to Jesus Christ. Come back to the music, if you will. Let's stand the congregation. My, what a good crowd we've got gathered here today. I'm trying my best to help you. I love you. God loves you. And I want you to thank a little bit today. And uh, let God speak to your heart. And uh, let's come down to the altar today, everyone that will. I want us to pray. Our prayer, God help me to surrender. Help me to surrender.